be a light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. Hello everyone, this is DCHL Devin here and welcome to another Light in the Dark DCHL video. And today I want to go over the top four lists of the Nova Open. So these are the rankings of one through four and everything that they have, I'm going to go ahead and cover it completely. Now keep in mind though, before we go into the actual lists of the Nova Open that won the Grand Tournament, I want to reinforce the restrictions and the scenarios and how they work at Nova. So unlike most British tournaments or maybe other tournaments you might be used to, this tournament does not have random scenarios. In fact, you know the scenarios well in advance of the tournament, probably about six months beforehand. Uh, in April, they get finalized, and in August, that's when you play them. So essentially, uh, what we're looking at here is, because the order was Domination, Lords of Battle, Fog of War, which if you guys don't know, it's kind of a hidden objective scenario, then Hold Ground, and then Weapon of the Enemy, which is sort of a, a weird scenario in the sense that, well, it's not weird, I guess it's a, like a cat and mouse game of um, uh, Capture the Flag in a sense. Uh, kind of hard to explain, you might want to actually read up on that. But the more important fact is, because the players knew that their first round was going to be Domination, and their first opponent would be Random, they knew that the likelihood that the, uh, the Horde armies would get bumped up in the first round was higher. But then, of course, you had Lords of Battle being in the second round. So therefore, it behooved you to actually take an army that could deal with Hordes, because in the first round, you might be able to pull it off because your opponent is random. In the second round, your odds of fighting a Horde opponent in Lords of Battle had increased. So, that being in mind, just note that the comp of Nova Open actually kind of went against Horde armies a little bit so because of the order of the scenarios of course you still get your random deployment you still get fog of war and then weapon of the enemy which throw things off a little bit but just note that for the first two rounds the other major important thing to note here is the restrictions of the nova open so you can only have one faction but or actually you have start with the first faction your general must come from that faction then your second faction which is the only one else you can pick you can only ally once so your second faction must be only 50 percent of the numbers of your first faction and it cannot contain your general so what this means is that you can't throw in a random undying on fell beast and then get your general that way or goblin king so um it also kind of kept up the theme essentially all the armies were about as pure as possible so just keep in mind of that, guys, when you're hearing these lists, there were some of those restrictions and those scenarios in mind. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first, we have Matt Iverson, the first place winner of the Nova Open. He had a pure Iron Hills Force, as you can see here on the screen. And uh, he had Dane Ironfoot on Warpig, seven Iron Hills Dwarves with Spear and Shield, four Iron Hills with Crossbow and Spear, one Iron Hills Dwarf with a Banner, Spear and Shield, and then he had a second warband, Iron Hills Captain on the Goat, uh, the four Iron Hills Dwarves with Crossbow and Spear, three Goat Riders with War Spears, and then the Iron Hills Ballista with a Siege Engine Captain. So a couple things to note about this list right off the bat. So if you guys have heard my Iron Hills review, you can see that I already agree with a lot of this list going forward. It has solid amount of numbers for the high defense that it keeps. It has Dane Ironfoot, always a must pick in my opinion, in Iron Hills Force, and then uses the Siege Engineer Ballista to bring the opponent to him, plus a healthy amount of crossbows. We're looking at actually seven here, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, eight crossbowmen. So that's actually a healthy amount of firepower for this list. Now, what we're also noticing is that he brought a banner. You may notice in the Nova Open missions that there is no mission in Nova Open that actually uh, gives points for having a banner. This is because I'm a big fan of Dale, and until they get justice, I uh, don't think any mission should ever have banner requirements. But to be honest, guys, let's put it fairly, many armies without banners can win in tournaments that have banner points. I just prefer not to use them. But he still brought a banner anyway. This, in my opinion, is because he is fight four. The higher fight value that you are, the more that you actually benefit from your banner bonus. And being fight four actually kind of helps, especially with his small numbers. He's essentially contributing extra attacks into that fight to win the fight and make sure he doesn't stop killing his opponent. So the banner here, actually, I think it's a good idea, despite that there's no mission that actually rewards him for it. 
The other thing noted is the Iron Hills Ballista Siege Engineer Captain is his general. That is very important. He did not pick Dane Ironfoot, and I applaud that. Dane Ironfoot is going to be charging headlong into battle. Also, he's easy to kind of pull around. So while it's highly unthematic, in the competitive perspective, he actually uh, did himself a service by picking the Engineer Captain, who is going to be usually protected in the back ranks, usually by a whole host of dwarves, and then he can send Dane to be the grenade that he is. So... Uh, this comes up to 25 models. I think it's a great list. As you can see, it obviously won the Nova Open. The thing is, keep in mind Matt Iverson's skill in battle. Uh, he is a very well, uh, a very well practiced player. He goes to the British events quite a lot. He even goes to Canadian events, and he definitely competes to win. So uh, just note that uh, you will obviously never be able to completely copy a list and uh, replicate its, its success, but. Uh, if with enough practice you can do so with a pure Iron Hills Forge. So let's go next into the second place winner. It is Benedict Baklinski and he's from the Canadian OSBGL uh, group and uh, he brought an Arnor Force. So let's look at it. He has Eladon and Elra here with Eladon being his general. Uh, armor and Horse for the twins. Uh, six Warriors of Arnor. Malbeth with nine Warriors of Arnor. One Ranger of the North with Spear, and then he has a Captain of Arnor leading six more Rangers, two more Rangers of Arnor with Spear, and then he has Elrond's Household, a Rivendell Knight Captain with Shield, and then five Rivendell Knights with a 34 model model count. Now, personally, as an Arnor player, I generally favor Horde Army style with them. They have the cheapest Fight 4 Defense 6 models in the game. At eight points apiece, it's a bargain. You just have to get around their courage problem. Now, in this case, he seems to have elected to just forgo the courage problem entirely. He has no manner of speaking of like R of Command or anything like that that would allow him to auto pass like Urkenbrand or something like that, or just simply using frontline troops that have bodyguard, which is a, a famous tactic of mine. I generally will sit bodyguard units in front of my Arnor warriors, but. He has not done that. Also, he has chosen a general that can go crazy, potentially. However, his only other real option would have been probably Malbeth. The uh, captain of Arnor might be a little too fragile. Uh, and Malbeth, unfortunately, is already a priority target. So I suppose what he's doing here is picking a target that he knows can handle himself at any time. And so I can, I can understand his decision. Uh, I might have gone with maybe the Rivendell Knight Captain, but uh, th maybe the thought's still out there. He obviously has already demonstrated quite a success of keeping his general with Eladon. So uh, Malbeth, more than what makes up his points, because not only does Malbeth only need to save about 10 models, or I'm sorry, yeah, 10 models to make up his points, depending on who he saves, but also the value of whom he saves is exponential, because every model he saves means that your other models aren't going to die as fast. Generally in this game, the faster you die, the faster you will die. Like it's kind of weirdly saying, but the more models you tend to lose, you're you're gonna you're gonna start to go downhill quicker unless you're also dealing just as much punishment to your opponent. Malbeth stops this process. So uh, as far as the Rivendell Knights giving him a little bit of firepower, they all have bows, which is important to note. Uh, they all. Um, to give him a little bit of mobility, a little bit of punching power. Being defense six allows his models to be kind of a low value. Uh, I'm sorry, his model count, I apologize, uh, to be at a, a low model count. So honestly, the list itself I, I, is great. I mean, as far as it, it hits a well-rounded area, it's obviously a list that has to kind of stay together in a weird way. Um, Eladon and El were here, and the Knights can obviously move apart, but otherwise, for the most part, you already know they're going to kind of bubble around Malbeth. So it is a static-style army. So in uh, Domination, he probably has to treat the match more like to the death, destroying his opponent, and then at the last minute, using the Rivendell Knights to launch off toward the objectives to make sure he goes and grabs them. He might hold one or two with these Rangers he has scattered about, which is probably probably what they are. More than likely the Rangers are objective holders and just like, you know, people maybe to carry the jewel in the final mission. Well, actually the jewel is probably being carried by the Rivendell Knight Captain. Uh, oh, so that's an important note. Uh, let's go into that one factor. Eladon and Elra here might have been made the general so that the Rivendell Knight Captain could carry the, uh, no, I'm sorry. So the final round of the, uh, of the Nova Open uh, makes you carry a jewel, but you can't carry it with your highest costed model. Um, this allows Rivendell Knight Captain to carry that, but actually the twins, you could pick one of the twins anyway, since it's, if you have a tied, then you uh, have to pick between them, and the twins would technically count as tied. So, 
Never mind on that. I actually can't speak 100% why he chose Eladon as the general, but it's not a terrible choice. It's just one I generally wouldn't take. But that is the list for the second place. And then the third place. Now, this one's going to be seeming really unusual. It's from Jacob Hall. Uh, he's a DCHL member, and he took essentially what would be considered a Mordor force, but it looks like more he abused the um, the composition. It, to Really, he wanted to take a Dark Denizens of Mirkwood force, it seems like. So let's get into what I mean by that. Uh, he took an Undying on Fell Beast, uh, and that's obviously his general. And then he has three mortal orcs, three giant spiders. Then he has the Witch King of Angmar, 317-3, on Fell Beast. He has three mortal orc warriors and then two giant spiders. And then he has the Spider Queen, uh, which has three Mirkwood spiders and two giant spiders. Now, it's only a model count of 19. Now, so there's a couple unusual things about this list. Number one, obviously, it is highly weak to Elven Bowfire, so he's going to really have to move quickly. Luckily, he has two fell beasts on his side to maybe disrupt that a little bit. And also, the low silhouette of the spiders helps in the terrain. If you guys don't know, Nova Open actually has a healthy amount of terrain just because it is all themed tables. Uh, but... He has three mortal orcs in each warband. I don't think he's actually going forward with these guys. In fact, in my opinion, they're objective capturers and then just to keep his break limit high. If he picked another spider or two, his numbers would drop dramatically and the amount of uh, spiders the opponent would have to kill in order to break him would be much easier. In this case, he pretty, the opponent would have to kill almost everything except for maybe like one spider. So maybe they could leave a fell beast alone like the Undying and then go kill the Witch King plus every other spider he owned, including the Spider Queen. So that makes breaking him quite a difficult task. Uh, he has two magic casters, of course, uh, that do very well. In my personal opinion, probably would have uh, given the Witch King maybe one more point of will and then one less fate. That's just me, though. I personally uh, follow Ed Ball's uh, advice that you're generally going to run out of will faster than you're going to actually run out of fate. But who knows, maybe this actually is a good composition. 17 points of will is still a very healthy amount of will. In fact, that's probably about the minimum I would end up going to unless I wanted to structure the force in a very specific way. Uh, other than that, though, the Mortal Orc Warriors probably might have given them a bow, uh, maybe just to kind of let them do something while they're sitting in the back. But then again, like I said, I don't actually know how he played these Mortal Orcs. I'm just assuming he sat them in the back of the field. The Mirkwood Spiders are a nice little wild card unit and uh, allow him to paralyze. You'd be surprised how many things don't have fate. Um, it, it, as far as big targets, even even most targets that you'd want to paralyze, I don't know, Birder, let's say, just has only one point of fate. And and a lot of other heroes have only one point of fate. Heck, if you get Boromir and you paralyze him, it's just a, a nice day. You've taken a 20-point model and completely neutralized major heroes. So the paralyze ability, I fully endorse. Uh, with it being 8 inches and the throwing weapon, I actually think these guys are highly underrated at this point. So, obviously, this is a glass cannon type of list. If you are not completely optimizing your movement, you will absolutely go downhill. Uh, three defense models all across the board, low model count, and honestly, yeah, if he messes up anything about his movement, he will absolutely be destroyed. So, I believe he actually lost one of his games because of that. Um, he lost actually pretty badly against, I believe, Derek Musillo. Uh, because generally, yeah, once you... Once something goes wrong, the whole thing's going to go wrong. This is very classic of like the Fell Beast list that he usually plays. So this is something that he's already used to doing, like uh, working around. So as for the fourth place list, if you guys saw on the... Um the, the roster that I posted online, you'll see that uh, someone named Nick Cottle is actually the fourth place winner. We're going to skip him. The reason why is because Nicholas Cottle was caught with loaded dice in the Nova Open tournament. Not only that, but he also cheated in his round or was declared ruled uh, it, as a cheater in the round against Benedict Baklinski. Um, he also... Uh, I don't know, reportedly stole from players, he stole dice and such. It, an absolutely... Uh, terrible thing all around. The only reason I'm bringing this up, I have actually zero respect for cheaters. The only reason I'm even entertaining this is because he did have a loaded dice and that was absolutely confirmed and the loaded dice uh, was used against uh, the likes of Evan Iverson, um, Matt Iverson's son, and, and obviously four other players who all had to deal with that. Those players essentially uh, were dealt a match where they could not win, uh, or not reasonably win, because he, his their opponent could just roll a six anytime they needed to. So with that being said, uh, he has 
Raw lost his fourth place position, obviously, in this roster, completely disqualified and banned from all future events. So we're going to skip to the fifth place, whom is now, I suppose, technically the fourth place winner. <laughs> so that will be Mitchell Westcott from the West Coast Hobbits. Now, uh, before I continue, let me just disclaimer. Obviously, this is the first time we've dealt with a cheater at the Nova Open or any DCHL tournament uh, for, from my experience of running them. And uh, cheaters are actually very rare in the Lord of the Rings community. It's unfortunate that we had one, but obviously I don't expect that to be the norm. But just note, obviously, if you do decide to cheat, you're probably going to get caught eventually. So I'd highly advise not to. And plus, guys, it's a game. Come on. So uh, so let's go into Mitchell Westcott's force. And this is the final one for the top five, four, however you want to think of it. So <clears throat> Mitchell was playing a pure Mordor force, and he played essentially what's reminiscent of a Mordor Orc Horde, but then with higher defense. So uh, he took a Ring Wraith at 272, took two Spectres, two Black Numenorians, three Moranin Orcs with shields, three Moranin Orcs with spears, that's his first warband. Then uh, uh, next warband of Mordor, he took Shagrat, uh, always an awesome hero. And uh, two Black Guard, three Mirandan Orcs with shields, six with spear, one with a banner. So this is another person who subscribes to the having a banner, even despite that the missions don't call for having one. And then he has a Black Guard Captain, a Mordor Troll, one Black, ne I'm sorry, two Black Numenorians, and then a slew of Mordor Orcs with an Order Orc Shaman. He has a bunch here, and he's got 48 models in total. So he's got kind of the horde going on, but then kind of not. He actually has Moranans with spear, quite a few of them. I uh, am surprised he didn't actually do mostly just take them all with shields and then have the mortal orcs in support, but it seems like he wanted the Moranan orcs to actually have a spear instead, reducing them to defense five. So kind of an interesting tactic. Generally, I would always opt for the defense six to keep your strength four models alive. Uh, obviously, the Mordor Shaman being an awesome pick. Now, he has Shagrat War Leader as his general. Now, for the reasons of Matt Iverson, I would not have done that. Um, you notice Matt Iverson did not make Dane his general. Uh, you may notice, obviously, the other two uh, had the Undying, which is an obvious choice. You should pick the Undying as your general. But basically, long story short, don't throw your grenade in as your general. It's not thematic, but because you know Shagrat's going to go into some of the worst of situations, I personally wouldn't recommend it. However, that's just my guess that that's what he did and maybe what he did with Shagrat uh, since he knew he kept him as a leader with three points of fate seven defense not bad he probably kept Shagrat in a role of slaughtering units and then use the black guard captain and the ring wraith to neutralize other heroes so maybe he kept him out of harm's way in order to uh, keep the opponent from securing those general points pretty easily other than that he's got a solid horde and it's a lot of uh, strength four to throw around so that's unusual for the mortal horde because generally people pick the orc side of it but of course moran and orcs are such a bargain i understand it he has two specters always a valuable option of able to cause little mischievous problems that the opponent isn't really planning for and having two of them allows him to just try two targets i he applaud that he didn't pick too many of those uh, a couple black numenorians giving him some fight four for the moran to support so i can understand that completely and he's got uh i guess he's got this little um stand fast bonus in a sense because his ring wraith allows his black guard captain to go to courage six however the ring wraith is 272 what that means is he has a very fragile wraith that will probably die to its own spell casting most likely, he probably only has about three spells, all casting a two will apiece. He might one will it if it's like a transfix or something like that, or a sap will. Uh, so maybe he can stretch that amount of time out, but obviously the Wraith is more of like a utility role. Uh, with that in mind, he's got two points of might on him, so giving him a little bit of leadership functionality. And I guess the two fate is really just to keep him secured against Legolas uh, or anything that would just cause a quick wound to him, maybe Bard or such. So, um, but otherwise, there you go. The Mortal Orc Horde. I have fought against these armies before, and they are very annoying. Um, they, you just never stop killing them, and then they just, over time, start to really dwindle in your numbers, especially on an elite heavy force. Uh, this kind of force would be actually a little difficult for the likes of, like, let's say, Jacob Hall's list to actually take on. Um, or even Benedict's, I think it would actually cause problems to them both, mostly because either low numbers and then the defense doesn't matter with the Shrug 4. So uh, with that aside, we'll notice uh, just only a couple other things maybe I might have done differently. Keep in mind, obviously his skill has been noted here. Uh, he's in fifth place of the Nova Open. 
so he has two mortar orcs with bow uh, multiple times. I personally would have picked him as trackers. Better shoot value. If you're going to take a bow with an orc, just get a tracker. Uh, that's just, once again, my personal opinion. Also, you get a cheaper orc. Uh, might have allowed him to get some shields on those Moranins. Uh, as far as anything else, he's got a Mortar or Troll. Uh, that's another wild card unit, probably allowing him to free up Shagrat to deal with infantry, while the Troll uh, is something that enemy heroes have to kind of deal with, otherwise it'll just hurl through their lines all over the place. So, uh, otherwise, yeah, no, I have solid force. I, I do like it. I would just make a couple structural changes, but then again, I said that about pretty much every list, except for Matt Iverson's, but he's probably far more proficient at an Iron Hills list than I am. So uh, with that in mind, that is the top five lists of the Nova Open. Let me know, guys, if you have any questions on any of that. I will post them online on the DC Hobbit League website, and I will cover, of course, the next top five, which technically is the next... Uh, yes, I'm essentially going to go to 11. So if you guys look at the roster at the end of this, uh, you'll see Samir is in 11th place. We're obviously bumping him up to 10th place because, well... Nick cheated. <laughs> so I hope to talk to you guys very soon and I look forward to it.